All right, so we just got done talking about stereotypical sex behavior in rats, mounting, lordosis, and we're talking about how rats have sexually dimorphic nuclei. Okay, now let's change gears just a little and talk about how genitalia develops in humans. So when, when fetuses are in the womb, at about six to seven weeks, they have what's called androgynous gonads. They are neither male nor female. These can be testes. These can be ovaries. Okay? And then at seven weeks, something happens. So a biological male has the sex chromosomes X and Y, and a biological genetic female has the chromosomes X and X. And it turns out it's all about this Y chromosome here, whether a little boy is made, little boy baby genitalia are made, or a little girl genitalia are made. On the Y chromosome, there's a gene called the SRY gene. Okay? And at seven weeks, it turns on if we have a biological male, and it doesn't because it doesn't exist in the biological female. And let's back up a second. There are two set of ducts. Remember we talked about reproductive anatomy. We talked about the fallopian tubes and the vas deferens. Well, early in development, we have the precursors to those. We have the wolfian ducts and the malarian ducts. And you have both of these here, wolfian and malarian ducts. Okay? Turns out the malarian ducts are on the outside here, and the wolfian ducts are on the inside. Now, I always remember wolfian ducts being male because the wolf is sort of a masculine creature to me. Okay? And indeed. If a little boy is called for, if, they're at, if there's a Y chromosome and a functional SRY gene, and it turns on at seven weeks, it's going to say, let's make a boy. And it's going to turn the Wolfian ducts into the vast deference. And it's going to make the malarian ducts degenerate and go away. The testes will drop. I should say these androgynous gonads will become testes and drop. And then the little male genitalia will form. And when the baby's born, you can look. Actually, you can see this in an ultrasound. You can see the little penis there. Okay? But in an XX biological female, there is no SRY gene. Okay? So at seven weeks, without their SRY gene, no testosterone is released. That's what I didn't mention. That the SRY gene releases testosterone and creates this phenomenon. But with the absence of the testosterone being released, then the default is that these ambiguous gonads become ovaries. They move to the side, become ovaries. The wolfian ducts degenerate, and the malarian ducts become the fallopian tubes. And a little baby female genitalia forms. And when the baby's born, you can clearly see it's a girl. When the baby's born over here, you can clearly see it's a boy. So that's the normal process. It has everything to do with whether SRY turns on or not. And when SRY turns on, testosterone is released. So if testosterone is present at seven weeks, a baby boy is made. If it's not present, a little baby girl is made.